going on guys beastly gamer here welcome back to the channel i know it's been a while since i've been on youtube i've been in the, the throes of moving a new baby work setting up my new studio unpacking it's just been so crazy i'm really really happy i got a few minutes to sit down and talk to you guys about things that have been going on in the video gaming community now we all know that recently in the united states our country has undergone some pretty radical changes uh, president trump has enacted a travel ban or a travel pause that has negated certain lands or certain countries from immigrating to the country for a 90-day period. Uh, after that 90-day period, the government will continue to allow these people to immigrate and travel to the United States, but under what they are calling extreme vetting. Now, the mainstream media has painted this move by the Trump administration and our government as a Muslim ban or a ban against Muslims. And in fact, it really isn't. Now, when you go to other countries, the Middle East per se, there are 90% Muslim people in certain countries. Uh, and Islam is the second largest religion next to Christianity. So to call it a Muslim ban is really being kind of disingenuous. And when you think about other lands in the Middle East that are 90% Muslim, that are not on Donald Trump's watch list, they're still allowed to come and go to the United States without any issues. It's just that President Obama and his administration identified these seven countries as places that harbor terror and they train people to become radicalized terrorists. So Donald Trump's administration is taking the reins from the uh, Obama administration and kind of moving forward with it. With that being said, there's some Middle Eastern developer who's uh, been developing games for a long time that feels that this move by the Trump administration paints America in a very bad light. And I wanted to share it with you guys and give you my thoughts. I'll drop a link in the description. As a Muslim video game developer, I no longer feel the U.S. is open for business. This is on TheGuardian.com. When I was a kid, dreaming of being a game developer, I hoped that in the future I'd be joining a large studio and working on a blockbuster title. Things didn't quite pan out that way. After leaving university with a fellow student, I am now the co-founder of my own company, Vlambeer, renowned for successful game releases such as Nuclear Throne and Ridiculous Fishing. I was born in the Netherlands, the son of an Egyptian immigrant and a Dutch mother. I was raised as a proud Muslim. For the past years, much of my travel to the United States has led to secondary selection, investigation, or interrogation. For all 100 flights I took in 2014, I jokingly created a website that kept track of whether my boarding passes were marked for, quote, random checks, end quote, before ever reaching airport security. For many of the 1.6 billion Muslims across the world, whether you're born in the Western world or not, this is a recognizable issue with air travel. Many of my Muslim friends calculate an extra 30 minute delay for boarding and transfers. The video game industry is one of the world's most important creative sectors, generating $90 billion a year in revenue, more than either movies and music, and it is strongly US centric. While large game development pockets exist in the UK, Northwestern Europe and Asia, most of the largest companies, industry events, and industry press are centered around the coast of the United States. For most developers around the world, their shot at success lies at the yearly Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, by far the largest gathering of industry professionals and knowledge in the world. My studio has diverted significant resources toward helping fellow and aspiring game developers in emergent territories around the world. I often travel to speak to students, help coordinate communities, and guide opportunities for developers with potential. I spent a few days in 2015 researching what the relative cost to visit the Game Developers Conference would be. The results were shocking. For an Iranian game developer, going to GDC was the equivalent of $4,000. For someone from Central African Republic, with an average salary, the costs were the Western equivalent, a staggering $120,000. For many enthusiasts around the world, visiting the Game Developers Conference is something they can afford maybe once or twice in their life, if at all. While Donald Trump signed the executive order effectively banning Muslims from seven countries without any prior warning, the scene at many U.S. airports was one of chaos and confusion. Muslims who boarded their plane in their country of departure with a valid visa and no reason to be turned back landed in violation of an order that didn't exist when they boarded. Many Muslims were unsuccessfully and illegally detained or coerced to sign away their green cards. Muslims from countries not even in the list were turned away. As one of the few visible Muslims in the game industry, I frequently talk about my experiences on the road with fellow Muslim developers who are flying to the U.S. for the first time. In the wake of the executive order, 
Many that spent years of their savings on the trip to San Francisco have learned that they won't be allowed into the country anymore. Even if they'd be allowed into the U.S., many are afraid of anti-Muslim sentiment from a population that can elect a president like Donald Trump, especially in the country with the highest homicide rate with guns in the Western world. Many other Muslim developers that live in the U.S. or even non-Muslims who only hold a dual citizenship with a majority Muslim country they've rarely even visited are now stuck in the United States with no way to visit family or friends abroad. With many highly talented engineers coming from Middle Eastern countries, this not only limits the available talent pool, but also effectively prohibits travel for many workers in the U.S. games industry. Some game companies have started to speak up, with smaller studios taking the lead over the weekend. Mobile games company Dots placed a message at the start of its popular Dots game that allows players to donate to the ACLU for their opposition to the Muslim ban. Other independent developers, including my own studio, donated parts or all of their revenue to the ACLU for a specific amount of time, raising tens of thousands of dollars in the process. Just today, larger studios and game developers have started to release statements criticizing the executive order, reminding gamers around the world, and there are 1.2 billion of them, that the games that they love are made by people of all races, religions, nationalities, including Libyans, Somalians, Yemenites, Iraqis, Iranians, Sudanese, and Syrians. When I started traveling on my own back in 2010, my mother would frequently check in to see whether I was safe. After many years of travel, she stopped doing that unless I visited countries the Dutch government had a negative travel advisory for, often countries that are unstable, at war, or at risk for terrorist attacks. For the first time in years, she messaged me last week to check in whether I was safe because I was in the U.S. Boo hoo hoo! Let me just tell you this, okay? I'm gonna keep it real. I'm one of the 62 million people who voted for Donald Trump. I did, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm actually proud of it. I think that Donald Trump is doing the right thing for this country. I think Donald Trump is a realist. And when you look at the situation here, you have the media against Donald Trump, you have the liberal elite against uh, Donald Trump, you have the democratic elite against Donald Trump, the establishment has been against Donald Trump, Hollywood is against Donald Trump. You gotta ask yourself why. This guy speaks off the cuff and he tells the truth. Everything he said he was gonna do so far, he's done. He hasn't done what any president in my lifetime has done. They all, you know, campaign on hope and change. Yes, we can. Get into the White House and completely screw over the American people. Completely lie, completely sell out to their donors and to their special interests. Just like Obama, just like Bush, just like Clinton, just like all these criminals. Donald Trump has told the truth, and what he campaigned on is the reason I voted for him. I was on the fence about voting for Jill Stein, but in the end, I was happy I didn't. And this is just me being totally honest. Donald Trump sees there's an issue with Islamic terrorism. And if you want to know, you're speaking to a person that used to be Muslim. I used to be a Muslim. I grew up in an Islamic community, okay? That's why my name is what my name is, because I grew up as a Muslim. And I'm not talking about Beastly Gamer, I'm talking about my real name. So I understand the Islamic community, the Quran, I understand all that. You know, I understand what certain words in Arabic mean. I know what, what the religion is. So let me just tell you like this. There are plenty of good Muslims out there. There are plenty of good Christians out there. But when you look at the, the majority of terrorism attacks, when it comes to mass casualties, for the most part, it has something to do with radical Islam. You might find a Christian, you know, uh, person every now and then, every couple of years who goes out and does a mass shooting. But when you hear about schools being blown up, when you hear about train stations being blown up, when you hear about planes being blown up and buildings crumbling to the earth, it usually has something to do with jihad, the holy war, people who have taken Islam and turned it upside down into some warped view of what the, the true religion is. Out of all the, the over billion people that are, uh, you know, Muslim, very few of them believe in this holy war or this jihad or this extreme version of, of Islam. So please don't get it twisted. Islam is not a bad, it's not a really bad religion. There's just some bad elements in it that have turned people radical. Donald Trump was man enough to admit that, okay? He was man enough to admit it. Everybody else is trying to, you know, dance around the situation and not call it what it was. But the truth was that radical Islam has become a blight on our world, not just the Western world. There are more Muslims kill Muslims than any other uh, religion. They're over there in Syria killing their own people. These are all Muslims being murdered and beheaded and children being killed and little girls being taken from their parents and becoming sex slaves. This is, I know there are plenty of good Muslims. I know good Muslims. I used to be one, okay? But when you look at the reality of the situation, 
radical Islam is something that needs to be wiped out. And Donald Trump obviously sees that. Now, they're calling this a Muslim ban, and I don't like the way that The Guardian allowed this propaganda to be pushed out. It's not a Muslim ban. Anyone coming from these countries, it doesn't matter your religion. If you're coming from that country, and that's what your, your boarding pass says, and that's what your, uh, what your information says, you're coming from one of these lands, you will be stopped. Doesn't, they don't ask you your religion. They just want to make sure that there's no terrorists coming into the United States. The media is against Donald Trump. That's why I'm for Donald Trump. The establishment against Donald Trump, George Soros, is paying all these people to go out and protest and do all this meaningless crap. The Women's March on Washington was absolutely pointless. And if you got all those women together and asked them what they were marching for, they couldn't even tell you. They don't even know. Ashley Judd out there talking about her period and crap like that. And Madonna wants to blow up the White House. Give me a break. These people are just pissed off. Snowflakes are extremely upset because they lost. And this guy here talking about this Muslim ban. Look, man. I'm sorry if this affects you in a negative way if you're a good person from another country. That's me just being totally honest. I'm an American citizen. I was born here. And I believe that the president of our United States has a priority to protect the citizens of the United States. I know that there are people all over the world going through issues and having problems with life. But the first priority of the president or the, the leaders in our government should be the protection of the people of this land before you try to bring other people over here and potentially put us in harm's way. You know, look at Germany. Look at some of these other places that have open borders. That's what Hillary Clinton wanted. What's going on now? You know, the radical, the radicalized uh, Muslims have come in. Uh, you know, got these insanely high rape epidemic now. People being killed in the streets in a lot of these places. Paris bombings. Because you want to, you know, help everybody else before you secure your own people. And that's why I'm happy Donald Trump's doing what he's doing. And I know I want to get some hate from, you know, some of these uber liberals. If you, if you feel like... Donald Trump is like the worst guy ever based on what the media has told you to think rather than thinking for yourself and actually seeing what this man is and who he is. He's a real person. Yeah, he said he's going to snatch a girl by the pussy, but he was on a, a tour bus that was an insane bus and it was just a bunch of guys talking shit. I've talked like that before. Do I do it? No, but if you're a celebrity, I'm sure women will let you do that. That's what he was saying. He's a real person. He tells you the truth. He owned up to what he said. He apologized for it. But look, he's hired nothing but some of the smartest women. He's surrounded by intelligent women. Minorities are leading parts of his cabinet. Give me a break. He's doing a good job. And I'm for our president. And to me, that's what being an American is all about. I didn't agree with Obama. I didn't agree with him on everything. It pissed me off that most of the stuff he said he was going to do, he lied about closing Guantanamo Bay and uh, stopping the war and bringing the troops home. He didn't do any of that. But I still supported the President of the United States, and that's what I'm doing now. So if you guys want to hate on me for being an American and believing in our country and wanting it to be great and wanting it to be safe and wanting people to have jobs, hate on me. Hit that thumbs down button. But this guy here is trying to paint this whole situation with a very broad brush. It's not a Muslim ban. It's a temporary pause, a 90-day pause on people coming from these lands until they can get the vetting, uh, the vetting apparatus in place. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. I know this is a touchy subject. I really, I'm the kind of guy, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't agree with me, I will respect that. Because I'm a grown man. I'm not going to get mad at you because you don't believe the exact thing I believe. That's really stupid. If you want people to believe the same thing you believe, it's going to be a very dull world. Because everybody will be walking the same walk and talking the same talk. I happen to believe in what our president's doing. I think that the decisions he's made so far have been astronomical and great for our economy and great for our communities. And I think that he's going to do some great things for this country. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up. I'm sure that some people are not going to enjoy the video. And if you don't, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Let it go.